Hello, my name is Jacqueline and I am super excited to share with you an interview today with a couple of fantastic designers for how to decorate your bookshelves. Hannah, could I start with you? Could you introduce yourself to everyone? Yes, my name is Hannah Lewick. I've been with Habitar Design for nine years now. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Kane. Um, I've been working with Habitar as a designer for the past seven years now. Um, and I am also very excited to, to talk with you guys. So here's an example right now. Um, so I'd love to hear your input on kind of how these books were done right. I mean, one of the first things she told me when we started designing these shelves is she's like, I just need room for all my books. I really want to be able to display all my books. So that was kind of the driving factor. I think a good thing she did is she mixed them both so they're up there both horizontally and vertically. I think that's a great way to kind of um, display the books keeps it a little more interesting. I know one of the key rules I've heard in the past is fill your bookshelves up like two thirds full. You wanna have a little bit of negative space so it doesn't feel too cluttered or too busy. Your eye is visually drawn to all the different, you know, corners of the shelves because the books are placed really nicely and you know, the heavy parts are dispersed really nicely, which I think is important for, for any shelf setup that you're doing. Thank you so much. And something that I noticed, I'm gonna to try to draw some conclusions too, even though I'm not a professional and you guys can tell me Tell me how I'm doing. We could show that anybody can learn. Hannah, you mentioned one of your kind of like preferences is you really like color. And mm -hmm. I feel like this is a great um, example of the space itself has so much neutral colors going on. So it really works that there's such like an eclectic mix of colors in all these books. Um, although it does seem like the decor is kind of like the, the vases and the cute little um, art pieces are kind of sticking a little bit more to like, um, blues and yellows, but the books were getting like lots of pops of color. And I feel like it, it looks fun. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't come across as like cluttered. And I think part of that has to do with how like mellow the rest of the space is. Yeah, definitely. I think this is, you know, books and accessorizing yourselves is a great way to add color to a fairly neutral, simple space. Definitely add some interest and some, some fun. So I would love to hear some thoughts on kind of an approach to a more formal space like this. Yeah, this is definitely a formal living room. These clients came to me and wanted help just, um, you know, they, in the back of their house, they do have a family room, they have kids, you know, that is more comfortable, cozy. But this is the place when they had guests over, you know, a place they wanted to gather for more formal gatherings. The dining room is connected to this as well. And it was a small space, so we didn't want to overwhelm the space either. A smaller space like this, it makes sense to be kind of more subtle and more um, refined with what you put on the bookcases. So that's why they have, you know, just a, free, a few kind of key sculptural items, um, just a few books scattered throughout, and then a few picture frames to just kind of make it a little more personal. This one I really love because um, I think that especially for me living in Chicago and having a smaller condo space, anytime where I see like design and function coming together in like small sections uh, that I get excited because I think that's something I can actually replicate versus some of the big expansive pictures we see um, that don't kind of mirror what I have in my space. I definitely feel like it feels more spacious than maybe it is. I feel like there's like some tricks going on here. I want to hear about it. <laughs> Um, I, you are exactly right. This is the smallest kitchen I've ever designed. Um, it's very small and, and, and true to Chicago fashion. Um, so I think it is, you know, relevant for a lot of people. Really just keep it simple. Again, it's, it's not, you know, overloading the shelves by any means. It's, these are, you know, items, summer items that they use every day, like cookbooks. Um, they're big chefs in this tiny kitchen, um, cookbooks, and then like some bowls and, and coffee mugs that you use, but then also displaying, you know, some wine glasses or things that are just pretty and you just want, you know, to be able to see. Um, and then kind of mirroring that with, you know, some, a plant at the top. Um, and then, you know, again, bringing in some books at the top and at the bottom, um, having some pieces that are heavier in terms of, you know, solid colors versus some that are clear. I mean, even the like terrarium at the top, you know, has that clear, you know, visually clear uh, structure and then kind of the, the wine glasses and, and 
the fruit bowl at the bottom too. The way that the items are organized really does kind of create a feeling of negative space where there isn't necessarily negative space. What I think is interesting here is that we're we're not looking at built-ins, which most of what we've been looking at is built-ins. So this is more about like, not only like decorating your shelves, but kind of like picking the shelves for the space too, mm -hmm. and kind of having that go into part of the design. They were big travelers, still travelers, um, and have collected all these pieces. They have, you know, you can see some travel books and, and things on there, and they didn't really have a lot of storage. So we decided, you know, to put a desk space, of, you know, for a workspace, but then also maximizing basically just filling that wall with shelving um, so that I could display all these things. So it's, you know, putting everything down. What do you want to include? What functionally do you need at this desk space? And then filling in with all the books, all the display, and then, you know, going through and making sure, playing with sizes, shapes, heights, things like that. Um, but there was a lot of trial and error in this. We moved stuff around a lot. I wanted to go over kind of some of the main takeaways that I learned, and then I want you each to share um, some of your major, like what are kind of the rules that you would recommend if someone is about to go attack their shelves right now after watching this. Um, I think the main thing that I learned is first of all, I think I have some editing to do because I think I do have some junk that kind of looking at all of those, I have some junk that needs to go in those like bottom shelves in a box. <laughs> I need to get some boxes <laughs> for the bottoms of my shelves because I've got stuff out that's just like, it doesn't need to be the focal point. So I might as well kind of get it down low or where it, like I can get it when I need it, but it's not that big of a deal. That was a big takeaway for me. You know, getting your shelf area, clear it all off, collect everything that you, you know, would hope to include on that. Um, and then, you know, breaking it up, I think making sure that you have a few, either if you want a lot of color, then making sure you have a lot of color, but also just if you want to stick to like a certain aesthetic, stick to a few colors um, and then making sure you have some large items some some smaller items some layerable items and then kind of you know dispersing those on the shelves i think that's kind of the first way to, to go about it as mackenzie says it's definitely trial and error don't get frustrated if it takes a long time you know sometimes it's even you know you set set a shelf up and then like walk away from it for a little bit like get away from it for 15 minutes then come back and see if you still like it or if something sticks out to you that you don't think is quite right um definitely take your time with it. It's one thing that takes even designers a long time to do. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not an easy process. It was so great to have you both here and to learn, although there's guidelines and ways to make it work, it's not because that person's items made it work because all these different people's items all worked in their homes. And thank you both so much for um, giving your time and your expertise and sharing with us all your tips and beautiful photos. Oh, perfect. Thank, Thank you so you. much. This was fun. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe for more interviews and Habitar design tips for you. If you need help with your shelves or any other interior design or home renovation needs, reach out to us at habitardesign.com.